Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope you enjoyed that segment with um, Brother Ibrahim al Sais discussing Ziyarat Ashura. Um, it's a Ziyarat that is um, very dear to my heart, and I'm sure many of you as well. Um, now we are going to be speaking with our expert, Sister Barak Hussain, who's coming from Canada, and she's um, a psychotherapist. And on social media, you can find her as the Muslim counsellor. Um, so join me in welcoming Sister Barak Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, yourself? Good, I'm fine. Are you up for our discussion about um, our relationship with food, eating? Of course, let's do it. It's excellent. So, um, again, we have people, myself included, you know, we comes to a Friday night, you think, oh, I just need to eat, you know, something health, well, unhealthy. It's like you've been sort of good in the week. Um, a lot of people refer to food as good and bad, and I, I kind of look at it as, you know, healthy eating, and then you can give yourself a bit of a break and not to be too extreme. Um, and I hope that's pretty normal. Um, I don't know about the relationship of food, but that's why you're here to explain. Um, when are things sort of a step too far in our relationship to food? How should we be looking at our intake of food? And, and really, how does it affect our mental health um, and well-being generally? So. Again, you ask such big questions, sister, <laughs> but very important ones. The relationship with food and mental health is huge, significant. What we put in our body is with that saying that we, heard, that we've, that we hear often, you are mm. what you eat. Yeah. So what you put in your body does have an impact on how you feel, your energy. And I find with a lot of clients that come in who are dealing with the typical depression, anxiety, um, and, and areas around that stress, it's because they're not, a part of it is the, the, the lack of healthy lifestyle okay. with the food, mm. of course. Mm. So when you're eating healthy food, you balance, it's all about that balance. Healthy food intake, exercise, good sleep, good spirituality, good social networks, you're taking care of your mental health well and your overall well being. And it will show, won't it? Absolutely. If one of these things are off, then mm. you know it's hard to deal with challenges that come your way. So with food, we want to make sure that mm. it's balanced. You got your protein, your complex carbohydrates, you got your fruits and your vegetables, and a variety of other mm. um, nutrients in there. I'm not an expert in terms of, yeah. you know, dietitian, yeah. but this is my experience yeah. as a therapist with students over the years where I actually sit and make meal plans with them. And mm -hmm. I work with a dietitian where I will send students to, mm -hmm. to them to get specific details on how to deal with that, including people who are dealing with disordered eating. Right. So when you are uh, constantly eating junk food, mm -hmm. uh, high, high sugar intake uh, food, uh, caffeine, you better believe that your anxiety is shooting through the roof. Wow. And it could impact mm. uh, your glucose levels, your sugar levels, which can also give you that high and that low, which is why you feel so energetic sometimes and sad or low afterwards, right? So we really focus on, you know, making sure to have your breakfast. Why is it called breakfast? Mm. You're breaking your fast after fasting all night, mm. right? Mm. So we've got a variety of healthy foods here, which I'm yeah. very happy to see. Um, you know, having a <laughs> banana Did you see the donuts outside? <laughs> uh, we're not touching those donuts. <laughs> Fruit people. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so having, you know, yeah. healthy, uh, like a bananas are great snacks. Apples are great snacks. I always uh, encourage uh, my clients, especially because they're students, right? Who's mm. got time to make a fresh meal every day? Yeah. So we prepare a meal plan. Right. Working professionals, yeah. parents, this is a time management skill, Definitely. financial tool mm. as well to help you. So let's take a quick look at that and then we can get into, you know, this is healthy eating and yes. what does disordered eating looks like. Mm -hmm. So healthy eating, hopefully, yeah. and I notice here in London people don't do that. <laughs> we're not great, no. No, we're, we're, you're great with donuts and sandwiches mm. and coffee mm. and smoking. <laughs> so... Um, uh, breaking your fast, mm -hmm. which in could include a sandwich, can include um, a smoothie, oatmeal, or you call it porridge here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So things like that are great in the morning because it's complex, hi sorry, complex uh, carbohydrates, yeah. which last longer and digest because they take longer to digest. Okay. So you feel fuller longer, right? right? Not as hungry. Mm -hmm. White enriched flours and breads, they go right through you. No nutrients. No, no, they go in, yeah, yeah, right through you. So you want things that are yeah. high uh, complex, right? So, so in terms of fruit, someone told me that the, there's a, a hadith, and I don't know which one it is, or the, you know any um, reference to it. But eating fruit is better in the morning because it gives you it, it's it's better for your well-being rather than eating later in the day. And I don't know if that's true, but would you say that just carrying fruit with you and having it as a mid snack between meals? Absolutely, and that's what you want to do is you prepare your snacks. That's why when we do that meal planning, yeah. breakfast, snack, lunch 
snack, dinner, light snacks. Okay. Because that if you can follow that flow throughout the day, and I find it's easier when you're at work because you can prep the yeah. stuff over the weekend the night before yeah. and then you bring it with you. Whereas if you don't prepare, then you're running off to work with no breakfast, you grab a coffee or a donut, you, you're hungry, so you're going to yes. grab that donut. Yeah. Possibly that donut over that banana because that looks more attractive well, to your hunger, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, your taste buds and your eyes. So what happens here is your sugar yeah. is off and you're yeah. just craving more sugar perhaps throughout the day and it just throws it's you off. energy levels, is it? Right, yeah. so when you have that breakfast, you know, mid-morning, yeah. you are hungry, your yeah. metabolism is working, which is what you want it to mm. be doing. So you have a fruit. A banana is a great mid-morning snack. That's my usual. I have like almost a set routine now because I'm used to right, it. Yeah. Lunch is whatever I've had the night before. Right. Okay, yeah. So the easiest way to plan about this is prepare dinner and lunch. What am I going to have for dinner and lunch yeah. for the whole week? Mm. Then that the hardest part is done. It's done. Yeah. You can use a slow cooker. You can cook things and freeze mm. them. And that way you're not tempted to go buy that sandwich yes. or that burger or those fries. Because I think with those, I mean, even when I look at the sandwiches um, that we have in, you know, ready retail shops now, um, when you look at the ingredients and you think it's just a sandwich of cheese um, or prawns, whatever it is, and the, the calorific value of it is extremely high because they use dressings so, yeah. and empty calorie things so it's that's just not no and, and you know you could you could replace it with hummus or yeah, avocado and you it's, it doesn't take a lot of time to prepare over the weekend you're saving so much money and time when you do this over the weekend yeah. or the day off throughout the week yeah. right so lunch you've eaten your lunch what do you crave after you've had something savory obviously sweet yeah i recommend people to eat dark chocolate dates which have a lot of spiritual and Islamic benefits that we know. And why do we break our fast with a date? There's so much sugar, fiber, and uh, like glucose mm. rather that gives you that energy, right? I like putting almonds or walnuts inside of them. And I mm. recommend for students, mm. you know, eating lots of, wal of walnuts because they look like little brains. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They give you the concentration yeah. and focus. Almonds have been known to help with focus and attention mm. as well. And believe it or not, cashews, subhanAllah, mm. have anti-depression oh, qualities in yeah. them. And a, a handful of cashews a day have been effective, just like antidepressant Do you medications. you advise your um, patients to have these kind of you know, Absolutely, nutrients, especially nutrients. when we know they're dealing yeah. with depression or anxiety. Yeah. I will go through a meal plan with them in terms of giving yeah. ideas. I give them resources. Right. Yeah. I connect them with the dietitian to get into yeah. even more detail because, mm. again, yeah. not my area of no. specific expertise, but I have experience now yeah. with helping students with that. Why do I know it works? Because when they come back yeah. and talk to me about, so I changed my diet, I've been walking a lot more, I've been working on my sleep, I've been writing in my journal, I've been doing a lot more spiritual things, yeah. reconnecting with friends, but it's the food I find when they come back and tell me, I feel a lot better because I've been eating better. That's so good. Amazing, because when you have the proper food intake yeah. and you develop a healthy relationship with food and cut out the negative food, you feel the impact of it in your body. So we're talking about people that have, you know, adults. And it was a couple of days ago, um, we, I was talking to, you know, my co-host Ali, and we were talking about children. And he was saying that, you know, um, for instance, you know, perhaps young children have bad habits. They're easily eating chips. You know, they're provided fries, as you call them in North America. Um, Crisps, and he's, yes, yeah, yes. And he's struggling, you know, for instance, children struggle with um, eating healthily. And is, it, is there a, a sort of a time age that you think, you know, you want your children to develop in a healthy way. So is it too early to start or is it never too early to it's start? It's never too early. And I'll give you my personal example. Yeah. My daughter wasn't allowed to touch sugar. She still doesn't, by oh, the way. Wow, yes. very good. She grew up eating blueberries, blackberries, avocado, bananas, honey as the only yeah. sweetener. So by the time she reached her first birthday, and we put, I put that cupcake in front of her, she took one look at it, poked it, put it aside, and asked for blueberries. Aww. Such a proud mama yeah, moment, you know? absolutely. Until now. So yeah. what we do, for example, um, when she goes to centers and they throw out sweets yeah. and give out sweets, she comes back to me healthy. I'm like, no, it's not. And she's like... She will, you know, yeah. should I, should I not? I said, well, you know, it's not healthy. Yeah. What would you like to do instead? Mm. So what we have done is uh, we have health food stores that sell sweets, as yeah. you call them, candies, yeah. that are made from fruits, oh, that are made from organic yeah. uh, cane sugar, for example, mm. rather than mm. highly processed corn syrup yeah. with, and fructose and glucose, mm. which is just terrible, yes. and the chemicals that are used, Definitely. which, by the way, have been linked to attention deficit disorder mm. to children, 
wow. and uh, that hyperactivity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's a lot of that. The the sugar drinks. Yeah. All of these things have a huge impact They're on so a child's development. Aren't they, for and cheap. Yeah. And cheap. That's the thing. They're accessible. Yeah. People, parents need to read and understand what's, what are in the ingredients. I say this, and it may be a little bit dramatic when I say it, but you're feeding your kids poison. Yeah, no, you're right. And I tell that to yeah. people. I said, do you want me to give my child yeah. poison with yeah. that lollipop? Yeah. I will give her the fruit lollipop that I will pay a little bit extra for, but, it's but she has that at home, and I'll have it in my bag, and I'll tell her to take these snacks with her. But so you're this very is, prepared, aren't you? And I think that's a very good um, Well, this is what lesson. we need to be yes, as parents, absolutely. right, as, and for our own healy eating. So yeah. you're saying too early, never too early. Never too early. Teach them early because they will develop the taste buds yeah. for the healthy food, which is why till now my daughter does not have the taste to mm. have sweets mm. and whatnot because Excellent. she knows what healthy sweets yeah. taste like. And she will prefer her and fruits. It's nice to hear that example because um, I've heard on social media, you know, uh, there was they, you know, there was a, I think a couple of years ago um, a story about a two-year-old that had never tasted sugar. And then when you go into the article, the child actually did want sugar and was eating sugar after two because that because was they got like, used to it. They got used to it. So again, it's um, it's, it's how nice we train. Positive. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's how we train ourselves and our child. Yeah. And it's what you offer. She has a cupboard, for example. We have a cupboard full of healthy snacks. So every day after school when she empties her lunch bag, again, routine, which is what kids yeah, need, need, right? Yeah. Pick the healthy snacks you want for tomorrow and make sure there's a fruit and a vegetable. And she's old enough now, for example, to yeah. pick. So when you engage your children in picking and packing their lunches, you know, it becomes an activity at home, bonding for the family, but then you're developing a healthy relationship and understanding of food. They get used to developing yeah. these habits early on. Yeah. Now, when we talk about disordered eating, yeah. right? These, these kids growing up, could be dealing with depression, mm -hmm. could be dealing with abuse in the home, could be dealing with, um, bu uh, what was the word I was looking for, bullying as yes, well, yes, right? Yeah. So being made fun of in terms of yeah. the way that they look. Yeah. So this can develop potentially, I'm not saying it's the yeah. actual link, yeah. it could potentially um, harm their relationship with food mm -hmm. if they have low self-esteem, and negative body image issues. Right. They start taking mm -hmm. control of what they put in their body. And so we get into the clinical terms here of these um, mental health disorders mm -hmm. of anorexia and bulimia. So anorexia is when they start calorie intake control of how much they put into their body. And they become very thin because they're losing a lot of weight, but in their minds, it's never thin enough. Wow. Right, and so it becomes a disorder right. when they're not eating healthy and they lose a lot of weight. So what, they're losing hair. Are they hair. seeing somebody else in them in their reflection? They're not seeing perhaps because you see images of, you know, um, young people. social media models yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, so that that's a part so of it as seeing, well. Yeah. It's like I want to look like that. Yeah. That's what they perceive as beauty. Don't forget the huge impact of social media mm -hmm. on our youth and even the elders in terms of how they should be looking out there, how they present themselves. What is beauty? The what is attractive? The expectation is on women as well, isn't it? That, you know, I want a size eight model and you know, and it's, it puts pressure on women, doesn't it? Doesn't Absolutely. It? So not, and that's yeah. a part of it as well. Mm. So you've got the anorexic uh, end yeah. of the spectrum and the other is the disordered overeating okay. and then uh, vomiting, you know. Um, so this is a different type of control where you're overeating, you're binge eating and eating so everything beyond, in sight. Beyond comfort eating. That's beyond comfort yeah. eating. It's okay to do comfort eating. You yeah. can have that pizza and wings, you know, <laughs> once in a while. It's about moderation. Yeah, you have definitely. that healthy yeah. food all week, you yeah. know, Friday night, relax. That's fine. It's in moderation. And yeah. you know you're hitting the gym next week, so yeah. that's fine. It's, it's when it becomes um, a loss of control. And I heard my clients describe to me mm. that, you know, I ate everything that I could find my hands on. Wow. And it felt good at first, but then I feel disgusting. And I want it out of me. Gosh. So then they resort um, to to that behavior. And what does that do on a physical level? The vomiting, you know, excessive vomiting, frequent vom vomiting. Well, the acid, the acid can damage the inside of our body, the esophagus, the teeth. Mm. Um, of course, there's a lot there. Mm. A lot of damage can occur there. But it's also the psychological damage here, yeah. right? Um, so we've got a couple of minutes in terms of treatment. How you help clients what what's out there for are, are these treatable these conditions absolutely they can be That's and it's a specialized area okay. so we have specialists in the area where we would refer clients to institutions to programs there's a bit of a wait list sometimes i know mm. this in canada i'm not too sure here but you can again access the muslim youth helpline as a start and yeah. they can direct you to resources in your area here 
uh, there is treatment. Yes. So uh, yeah. please don't lose hope there. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard for you to admit that you are dealing with this issue because this is your way of managing your stress. Mm. There are much healthier ways of dealing with that. And sometimes you could be a recovered uh, person mm. dealing with these issues, but because another stressor comes into your life, and I've seen that with people, yeah. Relapse. They will relapse. And so it's great when they come to get the support. Yeah. They said, I want to make sure that I have the support in place so I don't get to that dark place again. Yeah. Because it's not a happy place to be in. Uh, so it sounds like it's, so it, it's the catalyst for these kind of emotional, um, which the, then the symptoms are showing, you know, they, they go towards eating disorders. Um, and next up, we are actually going to be discussing smoking habits with um, Dr. Yasser Madhani. Um, and again, that's a stress um, reliever, isn't it, for yes. some, a lot of people? But is this a similar thing with food that people, it's the sort of maybe a stress factor that's, um, you know, it's got a catalyst to this condition developing? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, like we we're saying with stress, there's so many different ways that people exhibit yeah. it, right? And so when you're dealing with the disordered eating, body image issues, self-confidence and all the other things bullying abuse and whatnot they're all interconnected yeah. and it's the stress that could trigger the response to that it's so unfortunate isn't it because I think with children especially when they go through schools and you know the parents do everything right but what happens in their life is their own environment and um, you know we can teach them as much as we know and can um, but again, those, those elements of support and, and understanding. And again, we haven't even touched on people recognizing this. And again, as a specialist, you probably would if you saw somebody quite underweight. Um, with us, we, you know, we have this whole, could be underweight, over, overweight, oh, it's Or okay. they're just naturally thin, yeah, right? Exactly. And, and it, it comes down to the interesting conversation of, and, I, and I've had this with my eight-year-old mm. when she was younger. Mm. She One day, she's very slim body type. And I think this is a conversation we all need to have with our young okay. uh, family members yeah. and friends, this conversation in particular, where she, out of the blue, said, I'm fat. Oh, bless. As a six-year-old. I was wow. quite shocked to hear that. I'm like, Mama, what do you mean by that? Oh, I don't want to get fat. I don't want to gain weight. So it's this is common. modeled in front of her. Yeah. I don't know where, yeah. because we embody yeah. healthy eating yeah. habits in my home. And so we had the discussion where I explained to her and explained again recently to her, fat is a positive thing. Fat is a good thing. Fat keeps our bones together, keeps you alive. There's mm. nothing wrong with mm. fat. It's when you eat unhealthy and excessively mm. that you gain weight, that it becomes unhealthy. And so there's a difference yeah. between yeah. fat. Fat is a good thing. Yeah. We need it. But it's the unhealthy habits, the unhealthy eating that is the issue here. Yeah. So we need to have a, that conversation and understanding around that because people are afraid of gaining fat and yeah. weight. You need that fat to stay alive. And it's shocking it's a six-year-old because, I mean, I've heard, and obviously, you know, from your experience, you can share that, but I, I don't know how many people are, people are out there, parents are actually prepared that, you know, a passing comment with a child is something for you to you know, trigger you thinking, hang on, where did that come from? And it needs to be dealt with and nipped in the bud immediately. Immediately. So, immediately. Because we want to develop that healthy relationship yeah. with food and understanding that food is great for you. Yeah healthy food Excellent. that is and, and balance and moderation thank you so much well to any parents out there any individuals um you can get more information um as you mentioned it's the muslim health um, muslim youth muslim uh, sorry muslim youth helpline Help okay we'll double check yeah um or sister barak Hussain is on social media um i'm sure she's got a wealth of knowledge and not to inundate her but um it's really i will refer you to the appropriate yeah, <laughs> specialist um, but it's really good to have that sort of you know sometimes you know, you hear parents talking and they're, they're very valid points. So thank you so much. Bless um, you. I really enjoyed that session. And inshallah, we'll see you another morning. Inshallah. And dear viewers, as I mentioned, we have uh, Ali and I are going to be speaking to Dr. Yasser Madhani and smoking. Um, it'll be an interesting topic. Do join us.